Given the size of the animal's head, it must be at least five meters long. The moment when I stood on the platform was great. I left with one of my colleagues to recover it because it was in the middle. Not a mosquito for the moment. When the helicopter left, Daniel and his team were completely cut off from the world. The platform is on a pond in the heart of the 264,000 acre swamp that Daniel has chosen with care. Approximately 15 kilometers from the sea and 10 kilometers from the river Kaur. It's noon. The temperature is about 35 degrees Celsius. The humidity from evaporation is maximum. The air is difficult to breathe. The swamp seems to be sleeping. Daniel and his team are a little disappointed as they have not yet seen a caiman. They're beginning to think that they're wrong and there are none left. The water is very black. No fish are visible, just some birds, jacanas, which seem to walk on the water. And hoadzins, prehistoric creatures which eat tree leaves, which they digest like ruminants. <laughs> The first bird to fly over the platform at close range is the largest Amazonian heron, the kokoi. It's extremely rare and seems to live in the palm trees which border the pond. The first priority for the team is to build a shelter from the rain, which falls even during the dry season. The first thing to do is to set up a water level recorder. It'll be connected to a weather station we shall install on the Carbe, the local name for a hut. We chose this period to install the water level recorder because it is the end of the dry season and the water level is theoretically at its lowest. This means that if there's water now, there will always be water here the rest of the year. Right. 
The weather station on the roof of the platform is powered by solar panels. An electronic memory in a watertight box will record all the data, day after day, which will be recovered during our next visit. With these data and those from the water level recorder, Daniel will be able to answer the first question, does the pond flow into the river or does the river fill the pond? Does the water contain living creatures like plankton and do the fish and the caimans interact? Can the pond repopulate the zones impoverished by uncontrolled fishing or does it operate in a closed circuit? The water which feeds the swamp either runs down from the mountain of Ko and therefore contains unusable and even toxic organic compounds or is rainwater containing no nutritive elements at all. Moreover, the slow decomposition of the swamp's floating vegetable cover consumes oxygen, significantly reducing the quantities dissolved in the water. These chemical reactions primarily release carbon dioxide in the form of bubbles. This type of environment does not seem very favorable for supporting life. This argues against the high density of fish and consequently of fish-eating birds and caimans. In fact, caimans, the ultimate predators, are very good indicators of the biological richness of the habitat. So, as a top priority, Daniel asked veterinarian Benoit de Toisy, a herpetologist, to join him on the platform. Benoit, who has spent several years studying the Core River caiman populations, jumped at the chance. This is a quick reconnaissance before nightfall. Then we shall count all the caimans in the zone and estimate their sizes. Let's go over there. There's one just ahead. This is the first time we've seen big individuals by day. They do not flee and we're only three meters away. We can try to get closer, but it's not usual to see these animals in daylight. Let's bail a little. The boat's leaking. It was slung under the helicopter in a net, and the ride didn't do it a lot of good. So as not to count the same caimans twice, Benoit used his GPS to divide this large pond, about a mile in diameter, into parallel 20-meter wide strips. In the boat, he patrols each of these strips to avoid observing the same part of the pond more than once. Look, it's huge. There's a big one on the right facing us. Daniel thinks the counting procedure is inaccurate, but Benoit appears quite sure of his technique. At night, the hunting caimans are almost motionless, which helps. <laughs> <laughs> 